Hi, this is Patrick Cozy from Animal Pro Graphics, and this is part two of the pre-recording for our presentation at the JSGO conference. Again, check those guys out at JSGO.com. So in this presentation, we're going to use Cesium Sandcastle again, but instead of just going through the examples and seeing what Cesium can do, we're actually going to build a small application inside Sandcastle that will load a lot of standard geospatial data, uh, like vector data, terrain, imagery, and 3D models. Uh, since some of the data I have is local, I'm going to run Cesium locally. To do that, from the Cesium website, cesiumjs.org, you can go to Downloads, and then download the latest version. In this case, it's Cesium 1.1, but we come out with new versions every month. So soon we'll have 1.2 and then 1.3 out. And then I run Cesium with a local web browser. So I'm browsed to a local web server, so I browse to localhost 8080, and here's the main Cesium landing page. Before we jump into Sandcastle, I want to point out the Hello World application. This is a very simple Cesium application. I'm going to bring up the source with Control U. And inside the script tags, we create a Cesium viewer, which is the same code that we've seen in Sandcastle. And then we give it a string that is the ID of the div element that we want to put the Cesium uh, widget in. And here's the div element right here. So when we write code in Sandcastle, that code can also be used inside a Hello World application like this. Okay, so let's go back and bring up Sandcastle. So we're not going to need any of the other examples, so I'm going to pull that down. And so we can see the code a little better. I'm going to widen out the code window. And I have some local data here. I have a GeoJSON file, I have a CZML file, and I have a 3D model as GeoTF. And we're going to load this, we're going to write code to load these, this data. Okay, so let's start with GeoJSON. So I'm going to paste in a few lines of code. And first I'm going to create a GeoJSON data source. And then I'm going to give it a URL to a GeoJSON file that I made. And I made it using a tool called GeoJSON.io. You can check it out to create your own GeoJSON files. And then after I give the URL, I add it to my list of data sources. So I hit F8. And it's done the parsing and 3D graphics needed uh, to draw the GeoJSON file. And you'll see that if I double click and highlight something inside Cesium, uh, inside Sandcastle, I get these links. If I click on the link, we have the reference doc integrated with Sandcastle. So this can be useful for exploring the API and kind of learning your way around. Okay, so next up, I want to load a CZML file. So again, I'm going to copy and paste a few lines of code. And here I have an existing CZML file that will open in a second, example.czml. And this code looks very similar to the GeoJSON code, only I'm using a CZML data source instead of GeoJSON. So I'll hit F8. And we see this vehicle label. Okay, so let's take a closer look. I know that vehicle label is south of Death Valley. Okay, so let's zoom in. So it's actually moving. So this is really exciting to me because on the client, all we did was say load example.czml, but the czml file itself has all the data we need uh, to animate that vehicle over time. So let's take a look at the czml file. So here's the czml file, it's just JSON. Uh, it's an array of objects. And I want to look at this one object in particular, which represents the vehicle. You'll see it has an availability that's the time frame in which this object uh, should be considered. And then it has two properties, the label, that is the text for the, for the object, and then position data. So the text is vehicle, that's what's displayed in the 3D scene. And then the show property determines if it's going to be shown or hidden. And this could just be a scalar or boolean, um, but it can also be um, a value that changes over time. So what we're saying is during this time interval, it's going to be true. So this is kind of part of the time dynamic features of CDML. Then for the position data, instead of it just being at one fixed position, we give it an epic, and then we give it a bunch of time position pairs where these times are offset, these times are offset from the epic, and we're saying that this time you're at this position, and then at the next time you're at the next position, and so on. And then we give it an interpolation algorithm, so when you're at times in between those keyframes, it knows where to position uh, the object. So given how flexible CZML is here in doing the time dynamic visualization, 
we think a lot of applications can be built just by creating CZML, and then they'll have very little client-side code to actually need to use in the CZM API. Okay, so so far we've loaded GeoJSON, and we've loaded CZML, and learned a little bit about what the CZML JSON looks like. So let's load a 3D model. And actually, before we write the code, we have a Collada model here, which ends in VAE, and it has some textures associated with it. Collada is a popular interchange format that a lot of tools can import and export. So on the CZM website, czmjs.org slash convertmodel.html, we can take the Collada file and convert it to GLTF so that now it's streamlined and ready to be rendered for the web. So we take DAE, take the images, drag and drop them. They'll get uploaded to the server. They'll go through the content pipeline we need to get back a single GLTF file, which is a JSON file, but also has base64 binary data enclosed in it for the geometry, textures, animations, and so on. So we already have this GLTF file locally. So now let's grab some code. And first I want to run the code, then we'll have a look at it. Okay. Here's a pretty cool model of the ground vehicle. And it's huge. And we'll explain why it's big in a, in a second here. So let's look at the code. In computer graphics, we use a model matrix to describe not only where an object is positioned, but also its orientation, where is it pointing. So in this case, we create this model matrix by giving it a longitude and latitude, and then saying it's the northeast down frame, which basically lets the model point up relative to the Earth. Uh, we create this model object, add it to our list of primitives. So this is a lower level graphics primitive in Cesium, as opposed to the higher level data sources. We give the URL to the GLTF model matrix, and then this minimum pixel size is really just something I used for this demo so that the model appears at least 256 pixels, no matter how far zoomed out we are. So that's why it's easy for us to see. Okay, so let's look at some terrain data. So if we want to add terrain, as we saw last time, we can use the, wid the widgets to add terrain, but we can also add it programmatically. So right when I create the viewer widget, I can provide a terrain provider. And in this case, I'm using the Cesium terrain provider and giving it the URL to our SDK world terrain that's hosted on cesiumjs.org. And then if I rerun, now it knows to draw the globe with terrain. And we'll zoom in to Dev Valley again. And now we see the terrain data. Okay, and of course, the other big type of geospatial data is imagery. So let's see how we can load that. Okay, paste, post in this, paste in this code example. Um, and here we're saying for the imagery provider, for the base imagery letter in Cesium, when we create the widget, we're giving you something that's in TMS format, that's hosted on cesiumjs.org, that actually came from the natural earth data. So the natural earth folks have a lot of freely available raster and vector data that you can check out. And here we're overriding the base image layer uh, using this data. And Cesium, of course, can allow multiple imagery layers that can be moved up and down, and their um, brightness and contrast so on can be changed dynamically. So now we have the natural earth data. So that's kind of the major features I wanted to show to give you a taste of the Cesium API. The Cesium API is actually very big and can do uh, quite a bit more than what we see here. But I think this is a good starting point with kind of the focus being in, well, you have content, you have geospatial data, now how do I get into Cesium? And then from there, you can go much deeper into the Cesium API. Thank you.